Welcome to the Connecting with Coincidence radio show with Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD, bringing together the world's synchronicity experts to help you use meaningful coincidences to develop spiritually, psychologically, and practically. For more information, put Connecting with Coincidence into your web browser to find the book, website, Psychology Today blog, YouTube channel, and Facebook page. And now, here is the host of the Connecting with Coincidence radio show, Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD. Welcome to Connecting with Coincidence. Yes, I am your host, Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD. I'm a psychiatrist in private practice and on the faculty at the University of Virginia. Carl Jung introduced the Western world to synchronicity and the rock band The Police popularized the idea in their album Synchronicity. They were followed by numerous books, articles, movies, and videos. Why this growing interest? Weird coincidences can be messages to us earthlings about the true nature of reality, messages we can try to decode. They tell us that our minds are interconnected and are part of a greater mind that I call the psychosphere, that each of us has hidden powers and abilities. Look to coincidences for their helpful advice, their evidence for deep connections with those you love. To learn more, put Connecting with Coincidence into your web browser to read my Psychology Today blog and my book. To see how sensitive you are to coincidences, go to my website to take the Weird Coincidence Survey. Connect with Coincidence. Synchronicity is spoken here. Our guest today is Peter Woodbury. Peter's parents were Catholics, psychiatrists, and interested in metaphysics. The predominant metaphysical influence came from Peter's great-grandmother, who now would be called a medium. She was the inspiration for Peter's lifelong interest in the unseen dimensions. Peter attended Harvard University and majored in psychology. He then attended Boston University School of Social Work, where he earned a master's degree and became a psychotherapist. Peter learned about Edgar Cayce while in college, became more involved after graduate school, and after 15 years, moved to Virginia Beach to become part of the Edgar Cayce Organization, the Association for Research and Enlightenment. He's been there for 15 years. He teaches both life coaching and past life hypnosis regression at the center. Next year, he will be teaching in China and Australia. Peter is one of the world's most prolific past life regressionists, having conducted close to 5,000 regressions, about 350 a year. He leads individuals beyond the veil to experience the soul realms where an individual can experience a past life regression, but also much, much more. Peter, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you, Peter. Uh, I visited ARE uh, a couple of times and uh, in Virginia Beach, and one of the striking things to me is to walk into that environment and begin to see lots of coincidences. It seems to be a synchronicity-rich environment. Uh, and unlike a lot of other places that study dreams, uh, synchronicity was thought of somewhat the same way as dreams. People would analyze their coincidences the, similarly to the way they would they would analyze their dreams, which I think is uh, the right way to do it because there's an old song, uh, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream, merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Life is but a dream sometimes, and I think you know that very well. Yes, yes, I would agree. I think that um, that the symbols that appear to us in uh, everyday life are oftentimes be interpreted the way you would a dream symbol. How did you get involved with synchronicity? Um, like you mentioned in the introduction, I, I uh, got fascinated with the work of Edgar Casey when I was in college, and uh, the you know the concept of synchronicity was new to me, but it made a lot of sense. And so from there, I just started. Uh, it almost gives you a framework for for explaining what's already happening. And so what I, do you I mean, what do you mean gives you a framework for what's already happening? Well, I, I think that. Before there was the word synchronicity, synchronicities were happening, but you didn't quite know there wasn't any like connecting idea to put them in. You know, we would just say, oh, that that 
that feels like more than a coincidence. Mm-hmm. It just seems like I attracted that, or there seems to be a lesson in what just seemed to have happened by chance. But when I learned about the, when, you know, um, Carl Jung's explanation of synchronicity, it just helped me have a framework to begin understanding and looking more in depth at at that uh, concept and that experience. Good. Um, it's interesting for me to hear you describe that because. It took me a long time to find anything written and people talking about synchronicity at uh, ARE uh, in Virginia Beach. I looked around uh, as best I could early uh, in my several years ago to see where synchronicity fit in with uh, Edgar Cayce's thinking. And I know it does, but somehow it did. It didn't pop out at me. But somehow for you, when you were in college in Boston, that you that you put together a synchronicity and Edward K- Edgar Casey's thinking. So how are they related? Well, you, you know, of course, Casey passed away before uh, Carl Jung wrote about, you know, coined that term. So Edgar Casey never used that word. But if you if you study Casey's work, like you were saying, I think the word you have is the psychosphere. He talks about that. Uh, he doesn't use that word, but he talks about the underlying connection of all things and how that plays out in in multiple ways. And it's almost like the the, the universal forces or the God forces, whatever you want to call them, are going to work with you with whatever you're paying attention to. So if you're paying attention to your dreams, you're going to predominantly get your your insights that way. But most of us don't pay attention to our dreams. And so I think that's why synchronicity has become even more uh, relevant. You know, right now, you, you know, everybody is focusing on the on the one, 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 you know, that they they seem to notice the clock all the time. And it's eleven, eleven or, or one, eleven. And they, there's they're, they're synchronistically attaching a lot of meaning to that. That's true. I, I'm, I, I find it intriguing that you say everyone's doing that because I'm hearing that more often from people about the clock and the numbers on the clock. And uh I I tend to stay away from trying to interpret those things. How do you yeah. deal? How do you deal with the what pe- when people bring that up to you? Well, I think that um, it's just a budding awareness. You know, I don't think that the one 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 has any universal meaning. You know, maybe you know it might have some, but I think what it's doing is it's just connecting us, <laughs> making us pay attention to something. Ah, good. Good, 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 good. Because when I t- when I think about the, the the basic usefulnesses of coincidences, one of the first ones is they capture your attention, so you'll pay attention to them. And to, for for people talking to me about what does it mean about the four ones, the one 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 ones, or any other number, um, I can say they're trying to be able to tell you that there's something to be paying attention to. But at the second level of this, a friend of mine has been noticing that numbers on the clock, not just the ones, but other ones um, that have been important to him. And he's, he's into coincidences, he's into, syn- into synchronicity. And what he does is take them to mean uh, encouragement, that he's on the right path, that he's doing the right thing. Yeah, I would say that. I think it's just um, it's showing us uh, our inner connection. You know, we also have a, an inner clock so that if unconsciously, you know, we, we we know what time it is unconsciously. And so if we're, you know, what we're looking for, we're going to find. So there's a, the, the, the concept I always emphasize, whether it's synchronicity or anything else, is discernment. Like I coined a term, I call it synchronasty. That's when it, you, you can't just, just because you're synchronistically running into somebody, it doesn't mean you're supposed to date them or marry them. You know, there's something that, you know, people kind of give up their will. They say, oh, I, you know, it's, there's so many unusual coincidences it must be destiny and i go well it might be destiny that you learn from the experience you interpret it doesn't just because the synchronicities are happening you see i noticed when i was younger that if i thought of somebody i would uh, run into them you know it would somehow my thoughts would it would combine and attract people and i think sometimes you can think of somebody and they'll call you so i don't think that there's i think that we have a tremendous power of our mind and that's not necessarily meaning that the universal forces are are making that call happen. I think we have a lot of power to make things happen. Oh, so important, so important. Uh, there's this, we have to make decisions. And in regard to that meeting that special someone under us uh, with with a synchronicity event, uh, I have um, 
a song called All Those Coincidences. I have a little CD album that has that on there about seeing all those coincidences involving this woman and this guy. Mm -hmm. And 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 the whole song is about how much she thinks this means about how their relationship is going to go and it doesn't go any place. <laughs> yes. And and yeah. that point is so important to make that it be, is probably the the most popular post I had on psych, I've had on psychology today uh that that just it's just because we have these coincidences doesn't mean it's forever. And yeah. it is it isn't. So I you you're making that very clear and you're making something else very very clear that is so very important that we have uh, we have autonomy. We have the necessity to make our own decisions. Mm-hmm. We can't. We can be guided by coincidences. We can be guided into the flow of what's good for us. Mm-hmm. But there are times that we have to say no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And you are making that very, very clear and it's such an important point uh, for our listeners to be able to be reinforced. I think many people know this, but you're making that point. And we're coming to the end of this next segment, but this 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 uh, discernment you're talking about is a very, very important part of studying coincidences. You're listening to Connecting with Coincidence with your hosts, Bernie Beitman, MD, and that is me on the Exxon Broadcast Network. And our guest is Peter Woodbury from the ARE in Virginia Beach. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. We live in rapidly shifting times of extreme volatility and uncertainty. Such profound change brings a unique opportunity for the evolution of consciousness. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, host of Mission Evolution Radio Show, a program that explores the latest scientific developments and deepening spiritual truths supporting human evolution. Join me on XZBN.net, where I interview leading experts in science, physics, medicine, spirituality, and more. By applying divergent viewpoints to leading-edge topics, we uncover expansive and evolutionary truth to assist you on your path to enlightenment. More information and past episodes are available at missionevolution.org. Well, 
Welcome back to CC with BB, Connecting with Coincidence, and your host, Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD, and our guest today is Peter Woodbury from the Edgar Casey Organization in Virginia Beach. And we've been talking about discernment and, and coincidences, the importance of knowing how to think about them. And sometimes a coincidence is just a coincidence. It's interesting to see it, but it doesn't mean you have to act on it. And the place in which that that acting tends to take place is in romantic relationships where two people meet and a lot of coincidences take place. And I've, I've done a song with a colleague of mine I've called All Those Coincidences that is about that happening, where all those coincidences are supposed to mean forever – because it feels like forever, because you tap into something eternal, but it isn't. It's just something else to learn from. Yep, I would. Uh, the way I think of it is that it's it's teasing out: is this an ego-driven synchronicity, or is this a God or a universal forces kind of driven synchronicity? And so I think that's the discernment process: is this something that you're wanting to happen in your own your own creative mind? is attracting this situation or is it something bigger than that? Uh, and you know, I think sometimes it's both, isn't it? Yeah. But I think that, um, you know, the way I always put it is that the, the soul comes here to work and the ego wants a pina colada. And so the, <laughs> the ego is looking for shortcuts and, and just trying to, so, so you, like you're saying with relationships, you might like this guy or this woman, and, and you're going to attract them by the power of your mind. But if you think that that's the universal forces that's drawing you together, you're going to get in trouble. So it's teasing out that, okay, you know, because you might, your soul forces might be drawing you to this person, not so much because they're going to be the answer to all your problems, but because they're going to show you a repetitive pattern that you're stuck in that you have to deal with. So that might be the the deeper cause of the synchronicity, not not this happily living happily ever after, but actually doing some deep soul growth. Yeah. Uh, and we do that for each other as a da- as in a dance. We dance together, exchange energy, exchange experiences, help each other grow and then move on. Mm-hmm. And the, the what about the belief that there is a, a soul flame out there for us, uh, that there is our part, that, that, that our other half really is out there? Um, well, what about I, that idea? Well, you know. Casey's view of that, of soulmates, is, is basically the interpretation of the princess and the pea myth. Like, I've always, I've always enjoyed as a kid, I loved interpreting uh, fables. And the, the princess and the pea story never, never made any sense to me. Like, why, why is this man marrying the complaining woman? All of these women sleep fine. And the one who can't sleep at all is complaining, oh, that's, that's my princess, and they get married. You know, I was puzzled. But then as I watched my parents' relationship and, you know, people in general, I said, boy, that, i got to understand this story better. For as complicated as it is, it seems to make sense that people have, you know, conflicts with each other. So I think the princess and the peace story is about how the princess or, you know, whoever we're going to engage with in a deep relationship, it's not conscious. When you meet them consciously, they all look the same. But as she goes to sleep, what's triggered is a, the thousand or the hundred mattresses, I would say, is a hundred lifetimes ago. There was a P, which is the past. There's some little rub there that's unconsciously triggered, and that's how you recognize a, a partner. There's something from the past to get resolved, a pattern or, or a karmic tie. And so that, that Casey's view is not that we're, we're attracting to us the perfect mate. We're, we're attracting to ourselves the perfect person for us to do some deep healing work. This pina colada versus uh, going to school um, <laughs> is such an important tension. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I, there are many people, including me, who, who think that we can dance on the, on the learning entertainment interface, that a lot can be learned and have fun at the same time. Yes, I'd agree with that. Like, you know, I, I, it's a P, and I tell people it doesn't have to be a boulder. You know, you get to pick the, you, you, you can discern the, the, the level of, of karma that there is to be worked out. But when Casey talked about, he didn't use the word twin flame. He said twin soul. He says, those are souls that are going to be very supportive. The way I think of it is you talk to your twin soul about the problems that you're having with your soulmate. 
So when you're fighting with your soulmate, you'll talk to your twin soul who'll be your supportive friend. So Casey says oftentimes they're in family relationships. So it's almost like there's an incest taboo that blocks you from having a deeper relationship with your twin soul because you'd be very attracted to them otherwise. And there's not the soul growth that's there with that individual. That distinction between friend and uh, romantic. Yeah, it's really important to be able to um, make that that distinction between friend and romantic person. Um, uh, what, what, there's something special about uh, the, the Virginia Beach uh, location. Uh, there's something that you feel, that people feel, that Edgar Casey felt in going there. So, and we don't pay that much attention to geography and the, the way the land and certainly the vegetation and the other aspects of the geology and geography influence us. But it's very important. Our geography influences how we think and how we behave. What is it about, uh, about that Virginia Beach location that's so special? Well, well Edgar Casey. Uh, built the hospital there you know it was the advice from his trance readings and there was basically three reasons that it was good to build a hospital there one of them as you were mentioning is because as a psychic person i think it was because it was being near the ocean the salt in the air like i know that my great grandmother that you alluded i think the islands you know england and the caribbean they have many psychics so i think the ocean salt air somehow enhances a psychic's ability and so that's that's why edgar casey said that would be one reason it would be good to be there the other was that the he was originally here building a hospital and the reading said that the sand was high in gold and radium and if people would do a sand pack kind of take a swim and then cover themselves in the sand that the the, the sand had very uh, profound healing uh, attributes and then the third reason that you're also alluding to is he didn't use the word vortex, but he alluded to a kind of a an energy that is in this area that, in a way, I think it amplifies. It's a it's an enhancer of what you're working on. And so, if you're working with what he calls ideals, if you're working with spiritual development, it'll enhance that. But it also, I think, it also it, it kind of amplifies whatever you're going towards. And so, if you're if you're working on a material level, it'll more quickly take you towards the uh, the results of that. And so, I find that it has it's a it's a very powerful energy for for good and for you know sometimes for uh, challenging for mm-hmm. challenges. Well, I I had both. I had two visits in the last six months. Um, stayed at the same hotel, mm-hmm. and the first time I went down there, I walked in and I started talking about something that the the person behind the desk and the concierge were talking about. Uh-huh. So I and, and they had a, they laughed about that, and they had been talking for quite a while. So I hit that one right, and they remembered me when I came back the next time. Um, because I was so happy to be near the ocean. I cried when I went out on the balcony uh-huh. in my room and just yeah. so happy to be there. And the guy just remembered that. So that, that was a, that was a beautiful stay there. It's when I talked with the medical director, Joe, and had a great talk with her. Um, and it was, it was beautiful. Then the next time I stayed there, um, there was this clanking noise in the bathroom. Um, and the hot water wouldn't work in this shower. Uh-huh. And it was it was fairly bothersome, hard to sleep, and then I wanted to take a shower, and I managed all right. But it was such a different experience from the time before, and uh-huh. I I had a great time in some ways there, but then ended up uh, feeling kind of bad when I went home. So there were there was these two very dramatically different for me experiences there, uh, both one very good and one like why is this happening? Then the second time. Well, you you got an experience of what it's like to live here. <laughs> it's the, the sublime and the ridiculous. Wow. What about this telepathy being demonstrated every Saturday at one o'clock? What, what's that about? Well, I think that's, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit of an of a entertainment sort of thing. But it's to introduce the, uh, you know, to visitors the concept that the that telepathy exists, that that somehow beyond chance you can you can discern if you just open your mind you can pick these these images out. You know, it's it's a uh, it's using the same symbols that were used in, at Duke University when they yeah. were doing their psychic research. Yeah, and so it's an adaptation of that. And so oh. it's a, it, to to kind of help people 
kind of have a wow experience. What we find is um, a lot of children, especially, really do well with that uh, with that activity. Ah, because I think they're not thinking about it; they're just approaching it like a game. And I think that's how a lot of times, you know, the mind kind of blocks our reason and logic have its place. But I think it it can block the right brain processing, which I think is uh, connected to the soul self. Yeah, and we're coming to the end of this segment of the the vortex or whatever might be the dis- best description for what goes on in that location um, seems to be a place in which we- people can do what those kids do they can they can they can thin the veil between their minds and what's around them the psychosphere as i call it and move into a space where there is greater access to information and understanding than they can when their minds are more tightly uh, wound and more closed off and that that's kind of like going to the ocean and breathing deeply you can get in touch there with something that's beyond the regular reality Now, we've come to the end of this segment. You've been listening to Connecting with Coincidence with your host, Bernie Beitman, MD, on the X-Zone Broadcast Network. And our guest is Peter Woodbury from the Edgar Cayce Institute in Virginia Beach. Broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond. You're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. AVS Media. You have heard of the Exxon? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God, and finally, After the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com.
That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Yes, it's Connecting with Coincidence, Connecting with Coincidence, the radio show focusing on coincidence, synchronicity, serendipity, and our guest today is Peter Woodbury from the Edgar Casey A.R.E. in Virginia Beach. You have had a bunch of coincidences in your life, Peter, um, and I'm particularly interested in ones that happen in Virginia Beach. Why don't you tell us some of your your coincidences? Well, probably the the biggest coincidence of my life was um, I came down to Virginia Beach uh, as I had, you know was having a I lived in Boston I had a you know good life there I was on the faculty of Boston University School of Social Work I was a successful psychotherapist but I had been very drawn to the work of Edgar Casey and I was considering moving here which is going to be a big transition for me. So as I was meeting with the people that, you know, here at the ARE and kind of contemplating, I went for a walk on the, uh, the boardwalk and looking at the sunset, it just, the sunset didn't stop. It got to be night and there was this big red kind of light in the sky. And, you know, many people were just kind of looking at it, wondering what it was. And you know, eventually it dissipated. And the next morning in the newspaper, I read that the Northern Lights had made a rare display in Virginia Beach. I still have the headline of that. And so it was, uh, to me, that was uh, showing me that probably it might be a good idea to come down here. I I took that as a strong answer to my question uh, about moving down here. And so I followed that. It wasn't wasn't my only... uh, you know, it wasn't like I put all my, you know, marbles in that symbol, but it certainly, I, I was, it helped me kind of move, you know, go towards that choice. Well, let's let's, let's dissect that a little bit because um, one of the key ideas that we're talking about is discernment, mm-hmm. uh, and how do you take a dramatic event like this uh, and discern it? for your own purposes because there have been a lot there were a lot of people who saw that um yes that sunset that amazing sunset with the northern lights uh so each one of them could have been in the midst of a decision they weren't probably and could have been wondering uh, about which way to go and there see the lights and then use that as a nudge to be able to go to the yes or or the no well i was uh, i was debating the, the practical decision was to stay in Boston, but the spiritual decision was to move down here. So there was a, it was requiring some kind of a leap. Everything was going well, but I was just kind of questioning, is this the, is this the right choice? But seeing the Northern Lights to me just was a strong display of follow the spiritual path. And so that's the, that's the message that I took from that and that I followed and I think has been the, uh, it's been the right one. It, it, Just to, I, to, to go ahead. Well, it wasn't like I drew an angel card and it said, do it or something like that. You know, the, the Northern Lights showing in Virginia Beach was a p- pretty u- a unique, powerful symbol. It, it wasn't coming from my ego is how I saw that. <laughs> yeah, you weren't you weren't making that baby. Happen. I don't think I can manifest the Northern Lights. <laughs> However, I, well, the way I can look at this. Uh, mm-hmm. And and it's only a partly thing because we're we you're you're a therapist uh, I'm a therapist what we do is try to say you're responsible for some of this whatever the, this is because uh, yes. that's all we got is the person in the office so they got to have some responsibility so they can make a change someplace yes. it's that simple way of thinking but we're 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 ingrained, indoctrinated uh, with that idea uh, from the reality of it. I think that's true. I think we we do have responsibility. It's not just a, a product of being a therapist. So how about you arranging the time, just like we were talking about people know what time it is subconsciously? Mm-hmm. That, that is there some way we can think about you – subconsciously putting yourself in Virginia Beach on, on a day like 
that? Well, that would take a that would imply a whole lot of subconscious uh, interconnection. You know, for that, the, 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 I don't know wh- when was the last time the Northern Lights had appeared in Virginia Beach. It just appeared for one night, and it was just synchronistically that I happened to be on the boardwalk looking at the sky to be able to see that. And so I, it, what, I did discern it. Like, I saw that, and once I read about it the next day, it made me feel comfortable that this was the right decision. So it was... I was already on the edge of making this decision, and so this was just uh, validation of that. So I don't. I, if that had been the only, if I had felt extremely uncomfortable in seeing the Northern Lights, I would have kept working it. I would have kept discerning. But I was at that point where I was pretty, pretty close to making the decision. But I found that that uh, that that display helped me also understand that this was going to be for spiritual purposes and that it would be uh, constructive for me. That's yeah. how I interpret it, and that's how it's been. And that's how it's been. I, and I can yeah. see that. I think I hope our listeners are seeing how your mind was uh, at what we might call a razor's edge of decision. You were on the edge, and mm-hmm. you were kind of leaning in one direction. And then your mind got um, absorbed and expanded into this fantastic uh, visual display in front of you so that it was you and this this sunset that got extended into beautiful something that was beyond anything that you could have imagined happening mm-hmm. that day. Mm-hmm. And that made you beyond your, pulled you beyond yourself. I, I'd say you were, your veil was thinned right then. The, yeah. The, your mind expanded into that uh, openness that drew what you were drawn to by these beautiful lights. Yeah. And, and that that was an experience that said, I can have this now and I can have this here. Yes. And on that ego soul kind of level, I would of all the, the, the synchronicities I've discerned in my life. I would put that one higher, probably the highest one that I've seen is pure soul synchronicity. And I would, I would add that you went out to look at the sunset mm-hmm. and not everybody does that, mm-hmm. uh, which makes me wonder when I go to Virginia beach, why there aren't more people out there looking. Uh, it's so pretty, and uh, but I like the empty beach too. I mean, that's nice too. Well, I remember that um, even with this, the Northern lights, a lot of people weren't looking at it. Like it wasn't, I mean, some people were, but there was a lot of just people ignoring it, just kind of going about talking and walking. There, there wasn't, it, it, wouldn't, it wasn't like a predominant wow experience. Like I think if the newspapers had said, tomorrow the Northern Lights are going to show in Virginia Beach, the beach would have been packed. But since it showed up in this kind of spontaneous way, it was, it, it was seen by few, I would say. Isn't that a great metaphor for what we're talking about? Mm-hmm. Uh, not everybody looks, even though it's there. Yes. Yes. I think that's another important element. You know, I think that, you know, every day has miracles and curses and depending on what you're looking for is what you're going to find. Uh, uh, You mean if you're looking for curses, if you're not looking for curses, you're not going to find them? Well, Casey has a reading where he says a pessimist is rarely disappointed. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) that's so important really Um, and it says so many different ways but it's what ideas you energize is what you get yeah yeah and i've heard that a lot of times but it it even when i was in college i heard of like uh, libidinizing concepts which Mm -hmm. i don't hear much about anymore but maybe in boston you heard about it Mm -hmm. (laughs) libidinizing, putting energy, sexual energy for Freud, but it was more than that, into into concepts. And that somehow does something to what happens to you when you energize ideas. So you teach people how to energize ideas, then, I imagine. Yeah, or how to, you know, how to pay attention and how to discern kind of, um, you know, what you're drawing to you. You know, Casey's core concept is that like attracts like. And so you have to own 
what's coming to you. You have to own what's coming to you. It's a it's a positive aspect of yourself, and then what's coming to you is also kind of a challenging aspect of yourself or something to learn from. And so I, I try to move people into the soul consciousness where they they just start working, you know, do the work of what we're here to do, and do less of the kind of running away that's uh, that you know that all of us do to a certain extent. But at some point, I think we have to to face the the patterns in our life and try to work through them. Uh- I call I call us call call where we are Earth University. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. EU, <laughs> EU, <laughs> and uh, I I am uh, I am chairman of the only school within the department within the <laughs> Earth University that I know about. There are other ones out there. I just don't know about them. Uh, called coincidence studies. So that's mm-hmm. that's that's the way I I play with it. But the concept that we are here to learn and to teach. To help others as well, that's part of our learning, is to help others uh, learn themselves. That's, that's an overarching basic concept in almost everybody I talk with, is that we are here to learn and to help. We are mm-hmm. here to teach and to learn from each other, from these experiences that we have in front of us, because we draw them to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, as we come to the end of this segment, I, I want to be able to see how we can help that idea come out into the world that we are here to learn. You're listening to Connecting with Coincidence with your host, Bernie Beitman, MD, on the X-Zone Broadcast Network. And our guest is Peter Woodbury. And we are talking about how we get people to learn about learning. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. The new nonfiction book, Razor of Madness, is similar to cult movies like Clockwork Orange, Dragon's Tattoo, or The Other Side of Hell. Wayne Morin Jr. and Thomas Lee Howe will expose widespread and systematic deficiencies in this thought-provoking tell-all novel. Mind control rages among scholars in law schools. Human rights are ignored while thought reform and mental manipulation are accepted practices used as behavior modification. Dr. Louis Jolion West comes to mind. Media and public scrutiny shows that United States mental hospitals are in fact destructive murder industries. Razor of Madness Expose Novel details this epidemic through an in-depth professional and personal investigation. For decades there has been a revolving door policy that still releases killers and pedophiles back into society. The maestro of mind control continues to haunt America to this very day. Razor of Madness is available in paperback or as a downloadable ebook at Amazon.com. The concept of a new age has been around since the late 19th century, yet much of its original meaning has been lost. What exactly is the new age? Is it a religion, a collection of obscure esoteric practices, a series of doomsday predictions, or an astrological event? The New Age Chronicles is a unique, complimentary publication, bringing reason and grounded information to separate fact from fiction. Chock full of valuable information to support you as we make the monumental shift into the new era. You won't want to miss a single innovative issue. The New Age Chronicles newspaper is coming soon to www.newagechronicles.com. Uh, 
Welcome back to CC with BB. We are connecting with coincidences by connecting with Peter Woodbury from the Edgar Casey ARE in Virginia Beach. We're talking about uh, what you do. You're a teacher. You're going to go to China. Uh, you're going to Australia. Uh, you're going to be teaching. Um, you yes. are bringing with you the idea of what I'll call Earth University, uh, that we are here to learn how to evolve uh, our souls. And it's such an important basic concept. Not everybody has it. It's all, it's, as you say, it's get a pina colada or something, just relax, which is okay. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. need to relax. But yeah. this idea of learning, how, how, do you, how do you help that idea happen out there in the world, Peter? Well, the uh, coming to Edgar to the ARE and it, it, what it introduced to my practice, you know, not just the spiritual work I do, but the the clinical work that I do is the uses of uh, hypnosis. And so, you know, you know, Edgar Casey did all that he did because he would go into a trance and he could access, you know, much more of himself than his conscious mind. And so, through learning hypnosis, I've try to get people, if they, most of them will try it, to try to reach beyond their conscious mind and begin to access a kind of inner wisdom and discerning. You know, you still have to discern the level of trance. But the way I think of it is that, you know, before birth, we're pure soul consciousness. And then we have to, the, the, the soul consciousness is infinite. And then this earth university is a, is a three uh, bedroom apartment. And so you can't fit all of your soul consciousness into the three bedroom apartment. So most of it goes into storage, which is this, which I, we call the, the subconscious. So I help people move from the three bedroom to the four, fifth, begin to access, you know, ask these questions that they have. And I find that they, they get profound answers that mean a lot to them. You know, sometimes it's dream imagery. Sometimes, you know, you, you, to me, I, I never, I'm much more interested in if what they get is useful, whether it's real or not. But that's, that's part of how, how the work I've begun doing is just introducing people to themselves. <laughs> yeah. And that's clinical. You want to be practical. I mean, there's a lot of theoreticians out there that uh, I want to be practical. And one of the, one of the practicalities is uh, my attempts to understand the, the geography of the psychosphere. And what, you, what you've described um, is that sometimes you do uh, a hypnosis or regression with someone uh, who is particularly caught up in a difficult relationship with someone, having talked to them for 10 years. Yes. Would you can, would, to talk, t- tell us more about that and what do you think and what happens sometimes? Well, the, the, the way that I think of it is that, you know, as above, so below. So we have an internet that works right now and an internet relatively new kind of invention, but, you know, anyone around the world can send you an email and you can contact each other. So it's a kind of a, a newer, faster way of uh, communication. But I think that on the spiritual level, we also have a kind of uh, connection, like a psychic net, whatever you want to call it. And Edgar Casey put it that all subconscious minds are connected. So what I find is a relatively common experience is that someone comes in for a consultation and they haven't spoken with a loved one uh, relative for five, 10 years for extended period of time. And they've reached out, no answer. You know, they haven't seen their grandchildren or that sort of thing. And so they're, they're, they want to do some past life work, past life regression. They want to try to, to get some relief or understand this, why, why this is happening. So we'll, we'll have a session, do some subconscious work. And very commonly, a few days later, the person will contact me and say, you know, are you a witch? You know, <laughs> what happened? This person called me person that I wanted to work with you on, haven't heard from in 10 years, and they just gave me a call, and we're trying to arrange, you know, work things out. So to me, that's because the, what happened is that during the session, they did subconscious work, which the other person connected to. So it's like they sent a deep uh, subconscious email to that person, which they subconsciously received. They opened it. It triggered a feeling, or, and then they chose to act on it in consciousness. I strongly support the analogy between um, the, let's call it telepathic subconscious and uh, the internet. Um, Mm -hmm. What is, I I believe that this internet is providing increasingly strong scaffolding for the psychosphere. 
so that the kind of emailing between minds that you're talking about is being increasingly facilitated by all the clicks that go around the billions of people in the world. Yeah, and I think that synchronicity is oftentimes one of those expressions of that psychic connection that we have with each other and that we have with the universe. You know, specifically, um, one of the most common coincidences is to uh, think of ha- think of a question and go and without googling it, just going on the internet and see and, and messing around, you come up with the answer for it. That's happening. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's a connection between our minds and the internet, which is getting so strong. Yeah, with, with people looking at their phones all the time yeah doing a lot of clicking so that we our minds are becoming um uh nodes in the vast internet connectivity oh so you think that the 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 internet is actually facilitating that that uh, psychic development yes i do oh that's interesting yes i do uh, it's a scaffolding is the term i use Uh, and uh and you you can you can show like um, b- b- certain kinds of brain images and certain mm-hmm. kind of social networks, and then also looking at uh, at s- star and constellation and uh, p- patterns in the in the in the up in the sky that that the patterns of connectivity look similar. Uh, the the meshes of multiple connections look similar. Oh, so, that's interesting. That's, yeah, because I've always said that you know that that that. The new generation is always, you know, the, the older generation always puts down the new generation. They always say they're going to hell in a handbasket. And I always yes. say, you know, so we're, we're seeing a lot of this new generation with the technology and the phones and the gaming. But I've always figured, well, they're, 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 they're going to be different. You know, it's like we don't, the older generation doesn't quite understand it, but there's something evolving. And so it's interesting, like you're saying, that that can be a very constructive evolution of the brain and the connection it has to the the soul realms or the subconscious realms. Yeah, you got it. And I, I, I tend to uh, have some, I tend to hang around sometimes with younger people who are much more uh, conversant in talking about energy and telepathy. We, and, we must be about the same age because I always find it an honor when a young person will talk to me. <laughs> I, 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 I've, I've gotten so that I can talk with them without having to feel that because I know what you mean but, by it. Yeah. Uh, and, and and it's it, it, their openness to some of the ideas that I experienced at uh, ARE is yeah. there. And, and we come in, we have a couple of minutes left, but but what's it like to live in a place uh, or be in a place at ARE that is like uh, so so predisposed towards telepathic communications? Well, what I found when I first came here is that, you know, you you come to a spiritual organization and you think it's going to be, you know, singing kumbaya in a circle at lunch every day. <laughs> and that was the the illusion I had. And what you really come to, it, it's it, the, the best way to do soul development, soul growth, is to face your karmic patterns. And so you get here and everything you don't want to look at is shown to you. You know, whether it's the souls that you have problems with are here or the patterns that you have to deal with are here. So so until you learn that, like in, I, I call it becoming a karmic toreador. Like I used to fight every bull face on. I just had to learn how to just let them run by. Like, I'm sorry. I don't know why you're upset at me. <laughs> Maybe it was nine lifetimes ago. But that's the, for me, that you, it'll accelerate your spiritual development. But, you know, the, the spiritual growth doesn't happen easily. Like, you know, patience and kindness in the face of unkindness, you know, that that's the uh, humility. These are not easily earned uh, attributes. Uh, I, I, on my trip to Virginia Beach, my second one, uh, first one was delicious with its coincidences. The second one was difficult with the hot water not working <laughs> and the banging in the bathroom on the hotel I was in. And it was it was like going from like Nirvana to like uh, bang, 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 bang. What's, what are they doing to me here? And <laughs> and that's that's the uh, uh, that's an A.R.E. experience. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, we like you. We, we have, here's a great time for you. Here's an upgrade in your hotel room for the first time. The second one is I come home and like I'm a mess. I had a very good time doing some dancing down there, but it was like a rough trip the whole yeah. thing. 
Well, it's and, like I used to work at the front desk and somebody would come up and say, oh, you know, I just moved here. I just packed everything in my car. I've always wanted to be here. <laughs> and then after they'd left, I talked to we talked to the person next to each other and we'd say, what do you give them? Two weeks? <laughs> and inevitably, two weeks later, they're like, oh, I can't believe that you guys, you gossip and you have you've got all the problems the world has. And I'm like, yeah, and worse. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're exaggerated yeah what, what about uh what about and we only have a minute left but telepathy that you can pick up I, people's ideas uh more readily at in that environment you know I, I, since i'm here i don't i i can't really say what it would be different like i you know coming here but i do feel that my own um telepathy you know whatever psychic abilities yeah. have uh have developed. You know, Casey just said psychic comes from the word psyche, which is the soul. And so the more you become soul conscious, the more you're going to be psychic, you know, that the, the, what we attribute to uh, psychic ability. So I think the more you meditate, the more you do kind of hypnosis work, the more you just get into that vibration and that vibration of your soul permeates your ego consciousness. It's almost like the you make a lot of inroads into soul consciousness and your, your ego consciousness becomes thinner. Very good, very good. Psyche and soul, deeper into the soul, and you start seeing many more coincidences. Our guest today has been Peter Woodbury. Uh, you have been listening to Connecting with Coincidence with your host, Bernie Beitman, MD, on the Exxon Broadcast Network. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Are you or is someone you know struggling with addictions, depression, anxiety, relationships, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, grief, success, and prosperity? Do you know that your subconscious belief plays a big role in the outcome of your hard work? We can help you permanently change the beliefs that may be the reason for your struggles and failures. We care about getting you the return on your investment and the results you are looking for. We can help you be free of the limitations of your past and in realizing your highest potential. We work with people by phone and Skype. For more information, visit us at www.ritasoman.com. That's www.ritasoman.com. Do you think you have energy problems in your home? Do you feel better when you're away than when you're home? Joey Korn is a global leader in the world of dowsing who specializes in personal energy clearing and space clearing. He can help you create an ideal energy environment in your home no matter where you live in the world. Learn about his remote spiritual house cleaning services and much more at www.dowsers.com. You can get Joey's book, Dowsing, A Path to Enlightenment, as well as other dowsing books and tools, Kabbalah books, and Walter Russell books. Joey's work is really amazing. Go to dowsers.com right now. That's D-O-W-S-E-R-S dot com or call 1-877-DOWSING. That's 1-877-369-7464.